this is going to be a quick little lesson about redemption. In Colossians 1, 13 through 14, Paul explains how we have redemption. And redemption has to do with deliverance from bondage that we're in. It has to do with the fact that Jesus Christ bought us back and we are a, now a purchased possession. And Paul explains in Colossians 1, 13 through 14 how we've been delivered from the power of darkness and have redemption through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So look at Colossians 1. Colossians 1, 13. It says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So we're, we're delivered. We've been delivered. He's delivered us from doom. As it says in Colossians 1.13, He's delivered us. Who hath delivered us? What are we delivered from? We're delivered from so much. Just from getting saved, you're delivered from so much. You're delivered from the demands of the law. Down there in the same chapter in Colossians 1.21, it says, And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. You were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works. But we have a warrior, the man Christ Jesus, who never flinched one time when it came to the law. He never broke the law. The law couldn't break him. He was without sin. He was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin, according to Hebrews 4.15. 1 Peter 2.22 says, Who did no sin? Neither was God found in his mouth. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. However, the world's strongest man is without strength when it comes to doing everything that the law would re require. He needed to be delivered from the demands of the law. In Romans 5, 6, it says, And when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. You would be doomed if you had the responsibility of lifting sin off of your own back. It can only be done by the one powerful enough to bind the strong man. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have enough works to claim you could ever fulfill the law perfectly. But Jesus Christ fulfilled all righteousness. Matthew 3.15 Jesus Christ left heaven, was made flesh, endured the temptations, made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in likeness of men, humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He took seven steps down, as it talk, talks about in Philippians 2, 7 through 8. He did all this for your redemption, to accomplish your redemption. Jesus Christ is our deliverer from the law. It says in Galatians three thirteen, Christ hath redeemed us, redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He became sin. He, the, he let him put thorns, a th crown of thorns on his head. That's a picture of the curse. Just like when Adam sinned, the ground brought thorns and thistles to him. So when Jesus Christ was crucified, he had on a crown of thorns. Because he became sin for us. He, he was made a curse for us. So Jesus Christ is our deliverer. He delivered us from doom. The demands of the law. And our destination was changed. In Colossians 1.13. It talked about how we were translated into the kingdom of his dear son. You see the flesh, the world, and the devil had a stronghold on me. My eternal destination was pointed towards hellfire, but I was translated into the kingdom of his dear son the moment that I believed. Ephesians 2, 6 says, And hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So my destination is so fixed that I'm already, heav already in heaven in Christ. So, I'm, I'm saved from wrath through him, Romans 5, 9. I've been delivered from the wrath to come, 1 Thessalonians 1, 10. My eternal destination is settled. It's fixed. He has 
redeemed me and that my eternal destination is no longer the dreaded doom of hell fire. I've been delivered from doom. My destination has changed. He has changed our destination so much that we can set our affection on things above and not on the earth. Colossians 3, 2. The world is only a temporary holding place until the redemption of my body. As it talks about in Romans 8, 23. We're waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. He has gave me the Holy Spirit inside me as a down payment to show that he's serious about completing this transaction. It's Ephesians 1, 14. I'm a purchased possession. I have been redeemed. He purchased me. He bought me. You see, you were a child of hell, Matthew 23, 15. Now you're a citizen of an holy nation. That's 1 Peter 2, 9. Your destination has been changed because you've been redeemed. He bought you. Now you're headed to, you see, you were a child of the devil. Now you're a child of God. You was going to go spend an eternal home with the devil. Now you're going to go spend an eternal home with your new father. So he delivered me from doom, the demands of the law. My destination was changed because darkness couldn't hang. It couldn't hang with me or couldn't hang with him. Darkness couldn't hang with him. And since it can't hang with him, it can't hang with me because I'm in him. Colossians 1.13 says, Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? So, darkness couldn't hang with the Lord. He defeated the devil. The OG of the powers of darkness, the devil himself, couldn't hang. The Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, delivered us from Satan. He overpowers the power of darkness, Colossians 1.13. He binds the strong man. Even while fasting 40 days and being tempted just to make the victory more incredible, in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, he beats the reigning champ, the devil. Hebrews 2.14 says that through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. How ama Think about how amazing that is. He Jesus Christ came down to voluntarily die so that he could defeat the devil. His plan before he came down was to come down, live a sinless life, complete all the demands of the law, be completely sinless, defeat the devil, make the devil look stupid, and then voluntarily die just to go down there and the nether parts of the earth, look at hell, look at death, and smack them right in the face. And he did all that. That's that's an amazing thing. You were once, you, you were one of those children of disobedience, Ephesians 2, 2. You were of your father, the devil, but the devil's been defeated. And now if you've been saved, you've been bought. You have a new father. He... He redeemed you that were under the law. Now you're an adopted son, Galatians 4, 5. So he defeated the devil. Darkness couldn't hang. He defeated the devil, and the demons were put to shame. Colossians 1, 13, he delivered us from the power of darkness. That includes the, the demons. Our, as the King James Bible rightly calls them devils, but also fallen angels as well couldn't hang any type of spiritual wickedness in the scriptures couldn't hang he spoiled principalities and powers he made a show of them openly as it talks about in Colossians 2 15 the king triumphed over them the spirit beings are created by him according to Colossians 1 16 why would they think they could stand a chance in Isaiah 50 and verse 8, it gives you a prophecy of the Lord mocking the principalities and powers while he's on the cross. He says, He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. 
Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. He's saying, come on, bring it on. Is that all you got? I, I just imagine him being, you know, whipped, being nailed to the cross, being yelled at, talked down to while he's on the cross. But it's a battle going on you can't see. Him talking trash to the devil, to the unclean spirits. Not only did the Lord demolish the evil spirit world, he mocked them. He talked down to them while he did it. I can just imagine him saying, just like in Isaiah 44, 8, Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. De Darkness couldn't hang. He defeated the devil. The demons were put to shame. Death himself was robbed of victory. Colossians 1, 13, He delivered us from the power of darkness. That's death as well. Colossians 1, 18, Calls the Lord the firstborn from the dead. Our Redeemer, the Lord Jesus, became the first one to come back from the dead of his own power, never to die again. Redemption is only possible through him that liveth and was dead, as, it, as he calls himself in Revelation 1.18. 1 Corinthians 15.55 says, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Jesus Christ went down there and took his stinger out. Jesus Christ delivered us from the inevitable enemy, death himself. Our undefeated Redeemer didn't flinch when he withstood death to the face. In Revelation 1.18, the Lord tells us he has the keys of hell and death. So death doesn't have the keys to his own house. He got them snatched away by the Lord when he went down there. The most amazing victory is Jesus Christ will willingly laying down his life. So he can just go down to death, defeat him, snatch his keys, and get our redemption. So, he delivered us from doom. The demands of the law, our destination was changed. Darkness couldn't hang. He defeated the devil. The demons were put to shame. Death was robbed of victory. The dear son paid the price. Colossians 1.13 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. The dear son, his dear son, paid the price. He's determined, he was determined to shed his blood. And redemption is only through the blood of the Son of God, Colossians 1.14. It says, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. My redemption is only possible through his blood. And Acts 20.28 20, calls it God's blood. We aren't redeemed with corruptible things like silver, gold, dollar bills, but with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. See that in 1 Peter 1, 18 18-19. This makes the blood of Jesus Christ the most valuable thing on the planet because only through this can you have deliverance from death, from the devil, from hell. It's your only chance into the glorious side of eternity. So you see, he couldn't have been drowned. He couldn't have been choked. It had to be by the shedding of the blood of a perfect substitute for our eternal redemption. Hebrews 9.12. And Hebrews 9.12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and cows, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. It's only through his blood, not just through his death. It had to be a bloody, bloody death. It's debts, it was for debts we couldn't pay. His dear son paid the price, determined to shed his blood for debts that me and you couldn't pay. In Colossians 1.14, it says the forgiveness of sins. It is only through his blood that you can have forgiveness of sins. Those sins had you in such a big mess that you couldn't crawl your way out. It couldn't be our own blood that relieved our debt. It couldn't be our own works. As Romans 4, 5, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 clearly shows us, it had to be the blood of his dear son to pay the price. This was sinless blood, a sinless Savior who became sin for us, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, to take our judgment, our punishment, our wrath, and the hell that we deserved. The wages of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. But Jesus faced death for us. The price to pay for sin is hell. Revelation 21.8, 
but Jesus took that hell for us. We would be drinking the cup of God's wrath, but Jesus drank your cup. Matthew 26, 42. So the ultimate price was paid by the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a born-again believer, you are no longer your own. The Lord bought you back. And 1 Corinthians 6, 20 says, you are bought with the price. If Jesus Christ paid the price for your salvation with his blood, you should be willing to serve him through blood, sweat, and tears.